Well, good afternoon, saints, and welcome to our Wednesday afternoon Bible study. Today, we're continuing with the book of James, and we're moving to James chapter 5. So, uh, please open up your Bibles to James 5, and we'll see what new and interesting uh, and actually very um, uh, important lessons on practical Christianity from the half-brother of Jesus, Apostle James. Let's pray, though, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you for your holy word. Thank you for the gift of James, which is given especially, we thank you for Jesus, given through Jesus to him, to us. Lord, help us to take a look today at how we live our what lives how we deal with riches, how we deal with suffering, how we deal with our words and languages, how we deal with our prayer, our prayer life, and also remembering the backsliders, those who uh, have uh, slipped from the faith and, and are concerned for them and the steps we need to take to bring them back to you as you guide and direct us through your spirit. So now, Lord, give us wisdom, give us understanding, and give us application to daily living. In Jesus' holy name, amen. So, saints, what is chapter 5 of James about? It's entitled, How to Live with Faith and Reality. Uh, James this morning, or this afternoon, invites us to live a life that is based upon the truth of God's word, and yet the reality of the world that we live in. James is sharing counsel regarding a number of areas of vital Christian faith and lifestyle, including facing the challenge of riches, dealing with perseverance in times of trouble and suffering, swearing the way we use our words, praying, praying for others, praying especially for those in times of sickness, and also restoring the backslider. Basically, we're starting off now with verses, I think it's one through six, how to deal with riches, the sin of the misuse of wealth. It is a daily sin that can lead to destruction. Amen. So let's turn to our Bibles now, James chapter five. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And Paul begins by saying, not Paul, but James. I'm so used to saying Paul. He says in verse 1, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. James calls the rich to repent, for they are in serious trouble. Now, not just being rich, but misusing your wealth for your benefit and exploitation of others. Because remember, a lot of people in the Bible were rich. Abraham was rich. Isaac was rich. Jacob was rich. Solomon was rich at one point. David, well, Solomon was from the beginning. David wasn't at first. So there were people that rich, but that they were wealthy, but their wealth didn't own them. They realized God owned the wealth and gave it to them. So James talks about those who have money and don't realize who it's from and what its purpose is. He says he calls the rich to repent for they are in serious trouble. He says you weep and howl for the miseries that will come upon you if you don't repent. In verse 2, he said you, your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. He's saying your riches and your clothes wear, wear out. They will be destroyed. You're building your life upon earth and not upon heaven. He says in verse 3, Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. In other words, you misuse your wealth for your selfish gain. Your gold and silver will wear out, rust out, and you will be burned like fire, okay? It says your treasure here is divine wrath and fire. It's evidence against you. Your gold and silver, which could have been used to bless others and to give glory to God, 
you use for yourself. <clears throat> Even more, he says, indeed, in verse 4, the wages of the laborers who have mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Okay, now Sabaoth is the Lord of armies, not Lord of, not the uh, Lord of Sabbath. Uh, that's rest, but no, the Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord of armies. Okay, and the armies of God, these armies of angels, they reward the righteous, but they punish the wicked. Okay, so your greed, you've cheated their workers by withholding their just salaries, okay? And verse five, you have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fatted your hearts as in the day of slaughter. They live for their luxuries. You nourished yourselves like beasts for the slaughter, okay? Uh, you gave in to your heart's desire and it's hurting you and will hurt you if you don't repent. He says now what their current status is, verse 6, you have condemned, you have murdered the just, he does not re resist you. In other words, you live for your luxuries and you gain more riches by condemning and killing the just to get what you want. So here James is saying, you wealthy that exploit, you better repent because if you don't, judgment awaits you. Amen. That means treasuring up your riches and trusting in them instead of God. And now verses 7 through 11, where James talks about being patient and suffering. He says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. He's saying here, saints, that in your times of trouble and suffering and tribulation and trial, he says, be patient in your suffering because the Lord will return one day. Look for his return as the farmer waits for the rain. He says in verse eight, you also be patient like the farmer. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Strengthen your hearts. Fix your hearts on Jesus who's always on time. This also lets you know that not just his return in glory, that's the main thing, but even before then, he will relieve us, he'll restore us in his appropriate time. Just look for it and trust, trust in it. And in verse 9, he says, Do not grumble against one another. In, in these times of trouble and tribulation, don't be short with people. Brethren, lest you be condemned, behold, the, George, the judge is standing at the door. In other words, be patient. Do not grumble. Talk about people. Go off on them or judge others because it can lead to your judgment. By the same rules that we judge others, we shall be judged. Remember the Lord Jesus said that. And he is, gives the example of those who are patient. He says, verse 10, my brethren, those who believe and trust in God, those who have sacrificed and suffered for the faith, take the prophets, take their example, who have spoken in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience there. And then he goes on in verse 11, Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the purpose of the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. You see, the two examples of patience are the prophets and Job. <clears throat> they endured, but at the end they were blessed by God. The Lord will reward the overcomers. So wealthy, watch out for your wealth. Don't trust in them. Suffering, if you're dealing with troubles, trust in God as well. Know he will come and relieve you at the appropriate time. Note the example of Job and the prophets that they held on, they overcame, and God blessed them. And let's look at verse 12. Verse 12 is just one verse where uh, James speaks about the use of our words. It's a warning about the misuse of speech. He says, but above all, above of not trusting uh, in uh, your riches above 
all above even being patient in suffering. My brethren, do not swear. Watch your words. Neither by heaven, nor by earth, or by any other oath. But let your yes be let yes, and your no, no. Lest you fall into judgment. This means three things. Avoid exaggeration or lying. Two, always tell the truth. Three, respond with a simple yes or no. Because the more you talk, the more you drag it out, the more you're going to get caught up. Amen. Then we're going to look at verses now 13 through 18, where James writes about how you pray for the sick. This is very important. Because James is jumping around. He's giving a number of, of teachings of wisdom about the life of a Christian. Verse 13 through 18. It is 18, isn't it? Yeah. He says, 13, is anyone among you suffering? Is anyone among you afflicted? Are you afflicted today? What should you do? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. If you're afflicted with sicknesses or diseases, pray to the Lord. Call upon him, ask him to save you. Okay, if you are joyful, sing songs. Well, actually, he says two things. Yeah, if you're joyful or cheerful, sing songs, sing psalms. Be thankful to God, pray to him, thank him for his goodness and grace. And you do that when you're afflicted too. Verse 14, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. In addition to praying, you call upon the elders at that time, the pastors. Call for their support in prayer and let them pray over you. Pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. You're praying for recovery and for good health. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. Okay, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. This is all part of the healing process. The prayer of faith and uh, the uh, offering forgiveness of sins. Asking for the oil, uh, which is it was a medication or medicine for healing. This all aids the healing process, which God works through. And verse 16, confess your trespasses to one another. Confess your sins and pray for one another that you may be healed. Don't let a sin and unconfessed sin stand in the way of your healing. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Healing will be proof of God's forgiveness. And if you have sinned against each other, ask forgiveness for mutual reconciliation. Pray together corporately and also individually. For God hears these types of prayers. Okay. So uh, he says, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Don't put it off. Pray right away for you, others and yourself. And then he uses an example of effective prayer. Verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He was sinful just like us. And he prayed earnestly. Okay, he, he, he prayed in faith and earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Again, in verse 18, he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth produces fruit. So remember, prayer is, is a, a powerful resource. A powerful resource for doing the work of God and receiving God's blessings. And our final two verses, 19 and 20, uh, James talks about backsliders, those who have wandered away from the faith and are no longer living consistent with their Christian faith. Brethren, again, he says in verse 19, if any among you should wander from the truth and, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So here we have a believer who has wandered from Christ and is no longer living consistent with their belief in Christ. Someone who is acting in love should seek to restore their lost brethren. They will save others by doing so from a spiritual death. And so it also mentions a sinner who confesses their sins and returns to Christ is forgiven, restored. 
So here we see what James is speaking of, about don't trust in your riches. Be patient in your suffering. Don't swear at all. Don't swear. Leave that alone. Pray for those who are sick or ill. Pray and seek those who have backslid. Bring them back to God by God using you. Amen. So that's our lesson for today. Next week, we'll move on to the new book of 1 Peter. But what are the lessons that we learn from how to live with faith and reality? Now, I've got a number of them here today. The first one is beware the sin of trusting your own riches, saint. This is a sin against God who provides and controls everything. He is El Shaddai, including our lives. You've heard the term easy come, easy go. I don't know how true that is. But I do know that trusting in God will never disappoint us. Those who trust in wealth and do not repent will reap eternal punishment. Amen. The only riches they'll have will be in this life. Number two, do not hold back or defraud what is due to someone else, to others. The cries of those defrauded come before God and he will judge you. God governs the world, saints. He defends his people. He helps the marginalized and he punishes the wicked. But he also welcomes or forgives a repentance. So remember, if you're not living the way you should, you're cheating people out of money, regardless of the excuse. Turn away from it and God will heal, heal, heal you and restore you. Third lesson. Wait patiently for the Lord's intervention when enduring hardship. Even when reward or relief seems so far away, wait patiently for the Lord and do not lose heart because it will not disappoint. Amen. Fourth lesson, establish or root your hearts in Christ. The Lord Jesus will return soon. Therefore, root your hearts in the understanding that God will bring his eternal solution to all of our problems, to all things when he returns. So we have to understand that. Put your root in Christ, not in the things of this world or not in the world. Next lesson, five. Practice patient endurance when in working with and relating to others. Times of hardship can cause us to be less loving with others than before. James reminds us not to become grumblers or complainers. Such judging of others uh, can lead to our own condemnation, warns James. Tr instead, be patient, saints. Be patient with them, like others have been, prof been patient to you. Just like as James wrote the prophets in Joel, the Lord will reward the overcomers. We will be rewarded with uh, getting what we really want and need. Sixth lesson. Do not make oaths you cannot fulfill. Instead, just tell the truth. Let your, let your yes be yes, your no be no. Either you can or you can't. Always speak with integrity and truth. Amen. So that's lesson six. Lesson seven. Okay. Pray for those who are ill and learn the importance of prayer. James writes, call the elders of the church. Pray for others in prayer, expecting that God will heal them. Then leave the matter in God's hands. Note the prayer of Elijah concerning rain. Not the, okay. Put it in his hands, let his will be done. If you feel there's anything else you should do, then run it by him, and if that's the case, then do it. But God handles those type of issues. And finally... Lesson eight. This is lesson eight. God restores those who have sinned. Therefore, we need to seek those who have drifted from the faith and desire their restoration. We need to lovingly confront those who have fallen from their faith in endeavoring to save their souls from destruction. So, saints, that's our lesson for today. Uh, realize that James is, is not giving us pie in the sky. He's giving us practical directions on how to live as a child of God. Let's be sure we put this to faith and to practice. 
And so may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he give you his peace. Amen. See you next week.